Welcome to Sacred Heart. Welcome to Mass. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today is the third Sunday of Lent, which means Easter is coming. Uh, before I know it, Easter will be here. Um, so first of all, uh, for announcements in the back of church, there's a lot happening in the back. Um, so the first thing you'll have noticed is the, all the olive wood. Um, it comes from the Holy Land. Uh, I'll talk a little bit at, at the end of Mass, but uh, please do stop by um, immediately after Mass, if you'd like. Uh, and peruse the wares. Um, that's all olive wood from the Holy Land card by Christians, but I'll talk about that at the end. Uh, also in the back of church, the entrance, uh, we do have our Heart of Gold table. Our fundraiser for our school is coming up April 9th in just a few weeks. Uh, so please do uh, grab a, a ticket, or if you want to buy raffle tickets or help support the cause there, help support our wonderful school, that's greatly appreciated. Um, I wanted to also mention tonight, uh, at, not here, but at the uh, public school, at the high school, uh, they're having dance marathon uh, from 5 to 10 o'clock tonight, so you're welcome to come and dance your heart out, I guess, uh, this evening. I'm hoping on being there as well. Um, I'm not planning on dancing, I'm not a dancer, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe if you get, I get pulled onto the, pulled onto the, uh, the, the court, maybe. Um, but believe me, you'll need to wash your eyes after that, that sight. Um, but anyways, Dance Marathon is tonight from 5 to 10, so f please do feel f come over, to come over to the, to the high school and support, support their cause for all the, uh, for all the kids. Um, uh, and then uh, tomorrow night uh, in Preston, we do, at St. Joseph's in Preston, we'll have adoration um, and evening prayer from 4 to 6. Uh, so just like in all the other parishes throughout, throughout the Lent, Sunday evenings we have adoration uh, along with confession and evening prayer from 4 to 6. Um, and this week it's in Preston. Next week it's back in Otter Creek, but tomorrow night it's in Preston. Uh, that's pretty much it for announcements right now, so let us stand and greet our neighbor. And let us gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and my sisters, as we prepare today to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. And just a reminder for our penitential rites, we'll do the Confidior, which is found on page four. Found on page four. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting prayer and almsgiving have shown us remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in the flyer, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, here I am. God said, come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Before I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and led them out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. If they ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who I am. Then he added, this is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God further spoke to Moses, thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus, I am to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and, and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and, that, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the, de the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should, not, should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Several years ago, I had the opportunity to meet in church with some second graders. It was an awesome experience. Uh, they were preparing for their first communion, um, so they wanted to know, you know, what the things were for the celebration, like the chalice, the paten, the lavabo, the, the, uh, the bowls, the tabernacle, the altar, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, so we did a little tour of church. And it didn't just, the tour just didn't stop up here. The tour went all throughout the church and ended up in the back of church, back there where all the, holy, uh, the Hollywood is at right now. And back there in the corner, if you've never seen it before, there's a special box. A special box. Um, and we went by this box, and the children were like, what's in there? Um, and it's one of those surprising areas of the church. Uh, it's the lost and found box. Um, and you'd be surprised what's left behind in there. Sometimes I find keys, sometimes glasses, sometimes a stray wallet, a purse even. Um, a lot of things end back up there. If, you're losing, if you lost something, it may be back there right now, FYI. Um, but this time of year, though, you see mittens and gloves and sometimes even coats. But this day, this day when I was giving this tour to the second graders, there's something weird in there. Something that made them stop and point and wonder. There was a shoe. There was a shoe in the lost and found box. And it really raised an intriguing question. How does one go home without shoes? So, a couple weeks ago I spoke about uh, bubble gum. This week I speak about shoes. Um, you think I'm going crazy, uh, but maybe I'm already past the crazy point. In, anyways, uh, shoes in the lost and found box. <laughs> It might make more sense if than you might initially think. It seems strange, but it might make sense. Thinking about a lost and found shoe at church, it makes me think that we take for granted what shoes really are. You know, they're, they're foot coverings. They protect our feet. While at the same time, they allow us to travel to places that we wouldn't normally get to. Um, the truth, you know, can help illuminate uh, this most famous yet strangest of the divine commandments that God offers in the Bible today that we read in the first reading. God says to Moses, remove your sandals. Remove your shoes, in other words. For he reminded Moses he's on holy ground. So what's the deal with this command to take off your shoes? If you remember that the people of Israel, there are people on the move. They've recently been delivered from slavery in Egypt. So Moses' shoes and those of everyone else on this journey, they were traveling shoes, probably what we would probably call like hiking shoes, even though they were some sort of form of sandal. It'd be impossible to imagine the Exodus without shoes. With all the desert perils they had, tra had to traverse, the, the rocks, the prickly plants, the poisonous animals. In many ways, Moses and his people when they reached Mount Sinai, they had come to the end of their journey with this remarkable meeting with, with God. But God's commandment to shed his shoes is more than just about this journey. It's about the end of their journey. Moses' shoes are still traveling shoes. He's still protecting his feet as we all do with our shoes. The Lord seems to be saying to Moses, No, in my presence, you don't need your shoes anymore. There is nothing here to harm you. You're in complete safety and protection from your journey. Your shoes are no longer needed. You can take them off. You can relax, just like I do when I go to the rectory. We're three weeks into Lent. Next week is the halfway point. It's hard to believe. But one of the highlights of the many highlights at the end of Lent is the three holy days of the Triduum. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, or the Easter Vigil. And situated right in the middle of all these is the adoration of the Holy Cross on Good Friday. And one of the, uh, one of the directs, one of the, uh, I guess, part of our rules, I guess, in that big red book that the servers always bring to me, sort of outlines what's supposed to happen during Mass. And one of the, one of the rubrics, uh, it's ancient and yet kind of strange, but it may remind you of what we just heard today. So it says, at the Adoration of the Cross, the priest celebrant approaches with his chasuble and shoes removed. Again, we're removing shoes. 
The same message that was given to Moses because at the cross, at the cross, our journey to God finds an end. Our shoes are no longer needed. It's pretty obvious that good, protective shoes are needed across the events of our life for working, for walking, for hiking, for running. And even if we don't do it physically each week, let's take off our shoes in a symbolic way by recalling once again that our search has ended right here at this altar. Here we see, like Moses, the radiant glory of God on our Eucharistic mountain, just as he saw the burning bush. At this altar, it is always a good Friday. And the burning bush of God's glory for us is that cross, the outpouring of divine love that's given to us each time we gather celebrating this Eucharist. So maybe it's, maybe it's not so strange to find shoes in our lost and found box. Because once we've been found by God in his presence at this altar, well, our traveling shoes are no longer needed because God will protect us now. The eternal searching and journey of our hearts can end right here, where the lost are truly found. Just a reminder for our, creed, <clears throat> for our creed, we will do the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 10. Found on page 10. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn to the Lord with our prayers, asking for all we need to be faithful to the works of conversion, repenting of all that takes us away from God. For the whole church, that all who follow Christ may be a source of encouragement and strength for those seeking conversion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing to receive sacraments, and especially for our confirmation students, that they may thirst for and be fully open to God's grace and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering as a result of the war between Russia and Ukraine, may nations be unified in pursuing peaceful and diplomatic means to resolve and end the war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Christian community, may we respect and love each other and be dedicated to our families by following the example of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering in any way, that they will be comforted by the knowledge of Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members listed in our parish book of intentions, and especially for Luther, Fern, and Bill Lemacuil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they come, come to experience the fullness of life and love in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, as we journey throughout this Lenten season, help us always to find you waiting for us and helping us along to, to find you at our end uh, of our journey. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of your grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lord's peace, Father.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. By the grace of God, save for eternal life.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, as I mentioned before, uh, in the entrance of church, uh, there is the Heart of Gold tickets, but there's also the Hoyland olive wood. Um, and Salman is, is in the back right now. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, going to help us uh, with all of the extra stuff back there. Um, but as you know, in the Holy Land, um, olive wood is used to, to be, it, olive wood is carved um, in many uh, images, many holy images in the back. So the, the, the uh, statues and the religious items in the back of church, they were carved by Christians in the Holy Land. Um, using olive wood from the Holy Land, obviously. Um, and uh, it's, so in the Holy Land, uh, one of the ways that Christians make their, their living is by, by carving these, these, these images, by carving these uh, statues. Um, so by, by purchasing these, we help support the Christians in the Holy Land, which are very rapidly decreasing in numbers. Um, so any, anything that you buy goes to help support them. Um, <laughs> And uh, also makes a good gift for for uh, for many occasions. Um, so please do come and uh, look at the goods. I guess they have in the back of church. Um, also, reminder: don't forget to take your shoes with you as you go out. Um, uh, if, if we do find a lost and found, if if you lose your shoe, make sure looking lost and found. Um, and don't forget to get on your dancing shoes as well this evening for our for the uh, for the high schoolers for their dance marathon as well from five to ten they're probably dancing right now uh, so hopefully I'll see you there the Lord be with you and, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life thanks, thanks be to God, God.